Good evening, my name is Ben Reiser. I don't know why I said it that way, but I did. Uh, on behalf of the University of Wisconsin-Madison's Division of the Arts, and the University of Wisconsin-Madison's Department of Communication Arts, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to the 21st Annual Wisconsin Film Festival. Uh, last year was our 20th. Uh, were any of you here for opening night last year? So you probably remember we had a lot to say. Uh, we talked about the history of the festival. In particular, I spoke for what seemed to me like an eternity. So I've spent some time over the last 12 months trying to figure out how to spare us all a similar fate tonight. So for guidance, I turned, as I frequently do, to the movies. And I turned to one of the great films of the last 30 years, Miami Blues, starring Alec Baldwin and Jennifer Jason Leigh, as all of you will recall. There's a key sequence in that film where Alec Baldwin, playing a sociopath, composes and recites haikus while he steals frozen steaks and a handgun from his next door neighbor's apartment. Are you with me so far? So channeling my inner sociopathic haiku writing Alec Baldwin, I will attempt to limit my remarks and introductions by reciting them as haikus. <laughs> Not good haikus by any stretch of the imagination, but haikus nonetheless. Okay, here we go. Ready? I'm gonna count. Does everyone know what a haiku is? Because I barely do. Five, seven, and five, so work with me here. Thank, thank you, everyone. The people I thanked, uh, the people I thanked last year, and everyone else. <laughs> the Golden Badgers are awards that we give out. I think that's right. To Wisconsin films. Here to present them is my friend from WPT, Mr. Pete Schwabach. Thank you, I'll put another hand for uh, Ben Reiser. He told me five minutes before I got up here he would like me to do this all and I am, I am a contaminator and I'm... A little press for time. Um, it is great to be back in Madison every year. I love coming here. I love being around people who celebrate independent film and filmmakers and people who just are so creative and live just to make movies and live just to watch movies. So please give yourself a big round of applause for coming out here tonight and supporting. And on a personal note, I live in Marinette, Wisconsin, where it's, it's just nice to be here and see people under 80. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> And if you're over 80, great for you for coming out here and still supporting. The age of the average driver in Marinette is pretty much deceased, so <laughs> good to be here. Um, I have to use readers because I'm in my really late 20s, so... Um, uh, the Wisconsin's own section of the, of the uh, festival celebrates filmmaking right here in Wisconsin. Every year, well over 100 films with a Wisconsin connection are submitted for consideration. And this year, 43 were selected to screen in the festival. The final selections include everything from feature-length narrative and documentary films to experimental and animated shorts. This year, we are partnering with the Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin as the presenting sponsor of the Wisconsin Zone section of the festival. Yeah. I'm not a dairy farmer myself, but I've eaten dairy, so I kind of feel like I have a connection. <laughs> um, let's take a brief look at some dairy farmers in action. My office on the farm is our front end loader. There used to be a lot more of a barrier, like women can't be farmers. And I think that has changed over the last few years. There's a lot more empowering of women in the agriculture field. 
knowing you have to put in the work, women can do anything that they want to do. Very cool that we're partnering uh, with dairy farmers. I think that's amazing. So for two days in February, the Golden Badger jury holed up in the basement of Lathrop Hall because 4070 Vilas was flooded. <laughs> Not with its usual creativity. Uh, and they watched over 14 hours worth of films, pausing only for nourishment provided by festival sponsors, the Livingston Inn and the Great Dane Brew Pub. How about a big hand for our sponsors there, right? We have no still photo to show them in action, so we're going to keep them. At the end of an intense weekend of movie watching, our three jurors deliberated and decided on three films to honor with the coveted Golden Badger Awards. I'd like to bring our jury to the stage now. Um, our first Golden Badger jury member brings with him a lot of festival history. He has had five films in the Wisconsin Film Festival over the years, um, <coughs> including last year's amazing feature, River West Film and Video. Please welcome Amir Chakros. for years. Um, Madison-based writer and film enthusiast Edwin Eek Harbour has written extensively about the festival for Tone Madison and as well as film, uh, Madison Film Forum. Her insightful coverage of, local, of the local film scene made her an empathetic and knowledgeable judge of local talent. Please welcome Edwin Eek Harbour. Edwin, come on up. Our third juror this year was filmmaker D.P. Carlson, whose film Joe Frank, Somewhere Out There, graced last year's Wisconsin Film Festival. As has become a tradition here, our third juror was unable to make it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got some lame excuse about possibly accepting an award in Los Angeles at another film festival, so I think we can forgive him. Uh, D.P. wishes he could be with us tonight and sends his best wishes. Uh, yep, okay, we can talk to that. This year's three Golden Badger winning films reflect both the excellence and the diversity of Wisconsin-based filmmaking. Todd McGrain's Elephant Path documentary profiles behavioral biologist Andrea Turkaloo and her partner on the ground, Cecily Bernard, as they work to save forest ele elephant families from poachers. But the film isn't just about examining the efforts to save elephants from the ivory trade. It's a reminder of our own journey and sometimes cyclical struggle to resist those who would rather pillage the earth than protect it, all weighed against our universal enemy, time. Let's take a look at a clip from Elephant Path. It was raining, there was storm. That's how a man killed the elephant and nobody heard the gunfire. Bayanga, Central African Republic. At 11.35 a.m., the Bayaka arrived telling me that Cecily had found a freshly killed elephant. The tail had been clipped, but we found the hairy tip, which was notched with sparse hair. The notched tail pinned it down is Samson, a sizable male with 70-centimeter tusks. Bangani, Duani, Kundwa, Nabutu. Ala fa duri ginazanga. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage director Todd McGrain. It's an honor. It was, you know, many, many years ago that I was invited to UW Madison. And it was the first time that I even imagined being an artist in the world. And um, I'll be forever grateful to UW for that. Um, 
Elephant Path is really a film about people who live their lives on the path of the elephants and how their fates are tied to the fates of the elephants. Their joys and their sorrows. And I think in the film we can all see that that's the case for all of us. Um, the, the risk of losing such an iconic species. The elephants will be gone, we'll be the ones that suffer. And when I think of that kind of generational suffering, and I think about what gets me out of bed, it, it makes me think about my grandchildren, Luke and Noah. <laughs> and that we really have something to protect in this beautiful world. And then, um, just one thought, if, if you're unable to see the film, it will be streaming on PBS World Channel um, on Earth Day. And it will stream on the PBS platform thereafter. So I hope you get a chance to see the film. Um, maybe even support some of the people who are featured in the film. And, uh, thank you all very much. You, John. Life on the Mississippi is a unique journey on the iconic waterway that bisects our country. Director Bill Brown navigates the audience through smartly structured vignettes. The documentary exposes our past attempts to identify, celebrate, control, and destroy the river through romanticism, navigation, and economic growth. Brown uses Mark Twain's imagery to weave together a powerful tale that is both informative and scenic. Let's take a look at Life on the Mississippi. As a youth, there was but one permanent ambition among my comrades on the west bank of the Mississippi River, and that was to be a steamboatman. How do you get to know a river? How do you get to know anything? Stage director Bill Brown. Wow, thank you so much. This is terrific. Um, uh, thank you so much uh, to the Wisconsin Film Festival. I, as a uh, longtime fan of this amazing festival and also as a former faculty member in the Department of Communication Arts, uh, it is particularly exciting and thrilling and just um, all around awesome to uh, be awarded this, this film. So thanks to everyone who makes this festival possible. Thank you so much to the esteemed jurors this year. So, uh, Played Out is a day in the lives of Madisonians. We're at a crossroads. James Rundy's naturalistic direction crosscuts between three main characters who make choices about their careers, families, and lifestyle. Rundy uses his family and friends in the film and achieves an intimate, improvisatory, man, every year there's a word in here. I know you just do this. Improvisatory. Couldn't this have been a haiku? Come on. That word is longer than a haiku. Bringing to mind the quieter moments you find in John Cassavetti's work. That's a pretty good compliment. Uh, Rundy is also a strong yet understated presence in the film and uses Madison as the perfect backdrop for his film. Let's take a look at Played Out. Something to happen because y'all is in trouble. I know that for a fact. Please 
is joining me and welcoming to the stage, James Rundy. Everybody for being here. I'm very humbled to win this award. I do have a quick, I have two lists. I'll keep this brief. I have one list of people to thank. Um, the family's in the film, so that's my family, my mom, my dad, Alan, Jill, Rundy, Rosie, and Gabby, my sisters, my girlfriend Casey, Long, my best friend Alex Serafin, um, Tim's family, who you just saw in that scene, Tim West and Alicia Darden um, and their children, and um, my bandmate Leslie Walker and her son Gordon. And then the second list, is and also the jury, jurors and the Wisconsin Film Festival Communication Arts Department. Eric, I could go on. Everybody else, thank you. And then uh, the second list is people who should come to see the movie at Marquee on Saturday at 6.15. People who might be interested in this movie are if you're a mom worried about her son, if you're a kid who didn't get into college, if you're a younger sibling whose older sibling lets them down, um, if you're a wife, <laughs> and you're frustrated with your husband going out too late, you smoke too much weed, you're an adult who wants to be a musician, you just quit your job, you're a black father raising two kids, you just graduated college having trouble adjusting, or you have any family at all, even if they're not biological. And everybody else, and everybody else don't bother coming. I think you're uh, gonna need a bigger venue. <laughs> Let's give all three of our Golden Badge reward winners. Uh, tickets will be available at the door for all three of these fine films. I hope you'll consider joining us for these screenings. Um, those of you who watch Director's Cut, thank you for your support. Our new season starts on May 3rd, so please tune in for that. And at this time, I would like to turn things back over to Ben Reiser. Thank you, Pete and friends. You should all check out those films. Get your tickets soon. Oh, and before I forget, join us later on at the Concourse Hotel Bar for our four hour afterglow. I have trouble with syllables sometimes. Uh, some of you may know that our partners at the Department of Communication Arts have had a long, cold winter indeed and faced a really bad weather-related situation at probably the worst possible moment as it came to programming this year's festival, but they persevered and rose to the occasion, and so a haiku for our friends at Com Arts. <clears throat> a flood in Vilas. Displaced, but not discouraged. Spring is here at last. Guiding Com Arts through that storm has been Kelly Conway, who is not only the new department chair, but she is also the new artistic director of the Wisconsin Film Festival. And so, a haiku introduction for Kelly Conway. Now, Kelly Conway. A beacon of light for film. She will start the fest. ever written a haiku for me. <laughs> so flattered. Thank you, Ben. This has been a rough year for people who love the cinema. Um, we, well, first of all, filmmaker and film scholar J.J. Murphy retired from the Department of Communication Arts. Are you here, J.J.? My question is, how could you have left us? Anyway, he's, he's still with us, of course. Uh, more seriously, we lost a couple of huge figures in the world of cinema. Stanley Donnan, Jonas Mikas, an, a giant in the field of avant-garde cinema, distribution, exhibition. Carolee Schneeman, another important experimental filmmaker. Mm -hmm. And just a few days ago, we lost Anya Savarda. But as consolation, we have this, 
this miraculous thing called the Wisconsin Film Festival. Each May, our programmers, Jim Healy, Michael King, and Ben Reiser, travel the globe to find extraordinary things for us to see. At the same time, across the street at the Division of the Arts, a really talented team of people start thinking about fundraising, marketing, ticketing, event planning. And finally, the third component is you, the viewers. You, the engaged, curious viewers who are ready to watch films, whether they're made in Madison or shot on the Mississippi River or in Reykjavik. So thank you to the programmers, to the Division of the Arts, to the UW, and to you for coming out to watch films together. Long live the cinema. Long live the Wisconsin Film Festival. Okay, two more haikus and then we're done. <laughs> Important haikus. But haikus nonetheless. Steep and brew ballots. Tear the number, cast your vote. Leave them when you go. <laughs> haiku number two. The last haiku. Then you're gonna get to see our trailer and then you're gonna get to see a woman at war. Everybody ready? <laughs> Cell phones or anything that lights up or makes a noise, please turn them off. 